Hey guys, so my good friend Marcus asked me to play on a track that he wrote and he performed. I played with Marcus on a couple of occasions with live bands in a TV setting. I played on a couple of his recordings, instrumental music, and he's such a nice guy, such an amazing musician. And I always feel very blessed when he asks me to play drums on one of his tunes. So um, I'm gonna take you today through my process of recording drums on his track. I'm going to show you all the instruments that I use, all the microphones, take you through a couple of tracks and also just show you a bit my approach of how I would record some instrumental music like this. All right, so this is what he sent me. We got some guitar tracks, some bass tracks and some ambient sort of reverb and ocean way stuff that he came up with. Um, so this is the song. <laughs> So this is what I came up with. Um, so this is just my rough mix. Marcus obviously does a way better job at mixing than I can ever do. But um, here's what it sounded like when I sent all the files to him. <laughs> You can hear a pretty saturated dark sounding drum set um, which sort of made sense to come up with a very mid-range and sort of distorted kit for uh, the vibe that he was sending me and I also did some percussion on it not a huge amount of uh, percussion tracks but there's shakers um, my tambourine that I just played then some tempo strokes and also um, the metal sheet that I got um, right over there. You can see it in the video. I'm just hitting it and sending it through a reverb as a sort of layer to create depth in the mix. So here's what the drum setup looked like. I record with this specific setup a lot these days. I love those Slingerland 70s toms. I actually have the right kick for it, but in this case, I wanted to use this 80s scratch kick, which is just super loud and punchy, and it's really great for cutting through the mix. Um, I used this snare, which I literally recorded hundreds of songs with. It's a copper shell uh, made by Adrian Kirchler. He's doing these AK drums, and they are just so good. This snare is my Desert Island snare. Um, as for the symbols, I have those Istanbul Agop traditionals, as well as this really dark sounding Exist Hyatt, which fitted this uh, dark vibey track. Um, I have this Zildjian Constantinople Rite, medium thin low, and another big sounding 22 inch crash. Drums are equipped with Remo heads, coated um, emperors on top and bottom of those toms and a power stroke on the bass drum and a black dot on this lovely snare. And to give you some insights into how I mic the drums, I actually mic the kick with three mics. There's one via M88 inside uh, one Audio-Technica AT4040 as my kick-out mic and a rewired NS10 speaker as a sub-kick. Um, I have three different snare mics. Um, there's one on top, it's the SE Electronic V7X and then an AKG C451 as my snare vibe mic, which is just taped 
right next to the snare mic. And then as a snap bottom mic, I just have this Shure SM57, just a regular one, on Tom's Bayer M88. Great sounding uh, mics for Tom's and Kicks. Um, as the Hyatt mic again, AKG C451. As my overhead mics, I have this special set of uh, Neumann KM184 mics and then a Voxorama U47 mic, which is just amazing. And then as character mics, I used this one. It's a PZM 180. It's just a weird looking and weird sounding mic that is sitting right under my drum seat. And then I just have this SM57 which is just pointing towards my shoulder, sort of a talkback mic with a very special treatment. As room mics, I have these small diaphragm condensers that are just pointing towards the ceiling. And then those good old Coles 4038 as the main room mics. And all my percussion is just recorded with this Golden Age Project ribbon mic. So to take a closer look into the tracks that I send him, this is what all the tracks sounded like. Um, I summed my three kick mics together to one kick track because I don't want to overwhelm people by having three kick mics and three snare mics and just too many options. So this was the kick sound that I came up with. Pretty punchy. I didn't do gating with it. It's just a balanced level of those three mics with a bit of DBX compression and some EQing. Next up, my snare crack track. This is just the top mic of the snare. So as you can hear, I gated it in a sloppy way. I just wanted to have the snare hits but I also like to have some of the dirtiness that comes up when um, I hit the kick and the snare just starts rattling. The other mic that is just taped to my snare top mic is my snare vibe mic and I just send it through the Safari Pedals Dirty Dog Reverb. It's a very distorted reverb and it's just perfect as sort of a layering thing for the snare. The other track is just my snare bottom mic. I call it snare buzz. It's just doing what it's supposed to do. No real EQing on it, nothing fancy, but it just makes for a good snare track. You have all the punch from the top mic and just some rattling and some liveliness from the snare buzz mic. The next mic is my hi-hat mic. And as you can see, I don't always mic the hi-hat, but when I do, I mute it in the mix. This is what it sounded like. It can be useful in the mix. Maybe Marcus used it. I don't know. I didn't use it. So next up, the two Bayer M88 as my Tom mics. I bought them 10 years ago. They sound amazing. I don't want to change them. Some people change out microphones all the time. I'm not in the business of changing stuff that is working. So these are my toms. They just sound great in context and have this super dark and, and powerful body to them. Next up are my Neumann small diaphragm condenser mics. They're perfect for just building the stereo image of the track. Um, they're more or less the simple mics because I use the mono overhead as my main kit mic. Um, but this is what they sounded like. So as you can hear, good stereo image and it's very useful in the mix. Next up, one of my favorite mics is the U47 that is sitting right over the snare mic and it's just a very good mic to represent the sound of the kit. I have it dialed up 
pretty loud here in the mix and it's just a great sounding mic. Get all the punch from the snare, some kick and all the information that you can use. The next set of mics to get a great image of the kit are these Coles 4038 mics. I have them as my main room mics and they sound, as you can expect, really good. And what I do is send those mics through a devil lock to have sort of a room crush situation and that just one saturation to really give the room some grittiness and it's working really well in mixes. So let's listen to Room and Room Crush. The next set of room mics are my far room mics. They are pointed towards the wooden ceiling of my room. And so they are pointed away from the drum set. And I sent them through a Chandler compressor, which is really exacerbating the mid range of the sound. So all three room tracks. So a super vibey room sound that I really like. It's pretty unusual for me to turn the character mics all the way down, but I think with all the saturation that is going on on the rooms and also on the drum bass and all sorts of distortions here and there, I didn't really need them, but I sent them to markers anyway, but let's listen to them. So this is the first one. It is the, it's the PZM mic that is just sitting right under my drum seat. So great mid range. And the other one is the SM57 that is just pointing towards my shoulder, uh, sort of in a talk back position. Um, and this is what it sounds like. So also great sound signals, but for some reason I didn't really need them, but we can turn them up in the mix later. The other channel that I send out to markers is my punch channel. It's actually a combination of parallel compression, some sort of saturation that I just sum up to one track because I don't want to overwhelm people with the amount of tracks. Um, if you want to take a closer look into my process of this, I um, speak about it in my video workshops that are available on my website, but it's basically kick and snare going into some sort of um, compression and then some parts of the rest of the kit going into another part of compression and saturation. Those get summed up together, EQ'd a bit, and that's why you have some sort of a punch channel. If you mute it, um, the drums are not punchy anymore, uh, but if you dial it up, um, they get quite a lot of a tacky body, punchy sounds to it. And the last track from the drums is just my chamber. I think this is a reverb by the company called Altiverb. They do impulse responses of a couple of different studios. And I think, pretty sure actually, it's the church studio uh, from the producer Paul Epworth. Um, he does a lot of stuff with Adele and is just a famous producer and he has a, an amazing sounding studio. And I really like the impulse responses that the company took of those um, rooms and especially of the big live room. That's why I like to send the whole sum of the kit into this one and it's called Chamber and it sounds like this. It's just responsible for some depth in the mix. 
So as you maybe saw in Marcus' video, I usually send out the tracks, I send out the levels, and then I just send screenshots of what I did on the drum bus. Um, in this case, it's uh, EQing, compression, and a little bit of saturation with a tape machine. So as you can see here, there's a pull take EQ. Um, it's just getting rid of some of the mid range. I'm just boosting some of the 10K highs. And then I'm doing a little bit of compression with the distressor. And some of the saturation that is just coming from this Studa tape machine. So without it. And with it. So let's listen to the drum bus without all the processing on it. and with the processing. So just to show you some options on the drums, this is what the close mic sounded like with the two sets of overheads. Adding the snare vibe mic. Then adding the room. Adding the room crush. Adding the far room. Adding the punch track, chamber, maybe dialing in some of the trash mics. So to quickly mention the overdubs, here's what the metal sheet sounded like. And then I sent a tambourine just through my reverbs. And then obviously playing the tambourine as well. With a high cut on it. And having a shaker as well. That's it for today. I hope you liked those little insights that I gave you. Please check out Marcus Music. It's just amazing. And let us know if you have any questions and feel free to reach out if you want some drums on your tracks or some guitars from Marcus. And I'm looking forward to see you next time. Bye.